this is Steve from Mike Lighty, and I uh, recently did a trip to Iceland uh, with some non-diving friends and we knocked around and did all the famous tours and uh, landscape photography and we also took a day out to dive the Silver Spit. Iceland is probably the coolest single place I've ever traveled to um, over the years. It's, it's just got everything. It's clean, it's beautiful. Um, they have fjords, waterfalls, active volcanoes, glaciers, um, rugged coastline. It, it, it really has everything and, and it's pretty simple too. Just go get yourself a hotel or two, you know, if you want to hit different places along the way. Uh, there's different loops you can do from day trips uh, to multi-day trips, but you really can't go wrong. Just get a rental car and drive. Everything that you see is, is going to be gorgeous. Um, a lot of people don't associate Iceland though with the diving. And um, I went there with a group. I was the only diver in the group. And what I didn't know at the time was how accessible Silfra is. Uh, we've all heard of Silfra probably if you're a diver because it's some of the clearest water in the world and it's a very unique dive. You're diving in water that is just gin clear. You can drink it, you can take the regulator out of your mouth and, and take a drink, it's that pure. And the visibility is the best visibility of any place I've seen in the world, salt water or fresh water. Uh, of course, it's very cold, super cold, like 40s, dry suit uh, weather for sure. But here's what you might not know is that they have this whole diving and snorkeling thing down to a science. You can literally show up at your appointed time, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and they'll have everything. They'll have dry suits in various sizes. They'll have all of the gear. They'll basically take you through the entire experience uh, very clean and you'll be, you'll be done in probably three, four hours, including the gear up and gearing down time. Now it is dry suit diving and it is super cold. So if you're gonna dive, you're gonna have to have a log book and a dry suit certification. But if you don't have that and you still wanna experience it, do the snorkel. You can just show up uh, without any kind of certification uh, and do the snorkel. And you're gonna see most of the stuff that the divers do. It's a run, basically. You'll run through it like a snorkel run. Uh, so take you maybe an hour if you can stay in the cold uh, for that long. But it's a beautiful dive and you can easily squeeze it into an Iceland trip where you're going around and shooting waterfalls and landscapes and everything else the whole time. The weather changes really quickly in Iceland. So it can be uh, really sunny one moment and then you can have heavy winds and really cold weather uh, uh, the next moment. So with us, what happened was we went and checked it out the day before. It was a beautiful sunny day and we saw these people getting in and out of the water. It looked like great fun. When we came back the next day for my dive, uh, it was heavy, heavy winds and raining like crazy. Uh, so that's a little harder for the non-divers because they're gonna have to wait around for you for an hour or two while you're doing your dive. But rain or shine, it's a beautiful park. So you can just hike around on the boardwalks and you know, see the streams and the rivers and the waterfall while you're waiting for the dive to be over. And even if you don't dive Silfra, the park that Silfra is in was one of the highlights for the trip, even for the people that aren't diving. There's trout streams and waterfalls and, and walkways. It's really laid out well. So you can, you can see the whole park and you can do as much or as little hiking as you want. And you'll see great stuff no matter which hike you choose. The parks that they have are really well laid out, so you want to see as many as you have time for. Now, the, the classic uh, circle trip around uh, the whole island, that's a multi-day excursion, and that's something we're going to do the next time we go. So we just basically stayed in town, uh, and we would do day trips. Drive 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you're going to be in some uh, really beautiful environs. It's, you don't have to drive far at all to see all these you know, glacier fields and live volcanoes and things like that. If you like to hike, there's plenty of hiking all over. So I just, I decided, I just took a single camera with me on the trip. I took my Sony, Sony a7R 3 that's kind of my default travel camera. Uh, and I carried the 12 to 24 wide angle zoom on it. That way I had a wide angle zoom for waterfalls, glaciers, landscapes. And that's also a lens that I like to uh, use underwater. I was using the Eichleit housing for the A7R and I also use the uh, 45 degree uh, viewfinder. Uh, makes it a lot easier to compose and see all of your meters with that. 
You know, I think some of the modern cameras, especially you, if you're shooting 4K video and stuff, a lot of people are talking about heat issues. Well, when the water's 40 degrees, you don't have to worry about heat. If anything, uh, worry about cold. So yeah, the camera, camera functioned perfectly. Um, on our first day, we did stop and did a kind of a touristy thing, the uh, Blue Lagoon, they call it. It's a huge facility, it's a hot spring, and they shuffle you through there, you'll get your own locker and your own towel, and then you can spend as much time as you want in the spring. It's very touristy, so depending on which flights you come in, there could be a lot, a lot of people there. We came in on a morning flight, uh, and it wasn't very crowded at all, but even with the crowds, uh, it's very unique, and it's definitely worth seeing. When you go to the airport, they'll ask you if you want a little GPS hotspot for your uh, car for navigation. Definitely say yes to that, even if you have an iPhone, because they just work better. It's gonna work better there than uh, Google Maps. But you're never gonna get lost, lost. You just, the worst you might do is make a wrong turn. There's no big traffic snarls there, or traffic jam. So if you do miss a turn off, it's not that hard to turn around and get back on track to where you're going. They're renowned for their beautiful wild horses. These are, uh, it's actually a, a unique strain of horses. I think it goes back to like the 1500s uh, that live just in Iceland. And these horses, you'll see them around, they're beautiful. Uh, and there's also when you're driving out in the country, if you stop your car, there might be some goats uh, that come up to see if, I guess, see if you have some food for them or whatever. But there's all kinds of bird life and just everything you would expect to see you know, on a, on a rugged coastline, they have puffins. So we didn't get to any of the off-island, off-islands. We were uh, pretty much land-based, um, so we didn't get off to see puffins or any of the, you know, the aquatic life that's offshore, the whales and things like that. But that's certainly there as well. I recommend Iceland to everybody, uh, and I recommend diving sulfur or snorkeling sulfur to everybody as well. It's cold, but it's worth it.